Once again, as we kick off our number two of our show this morning, we start with Willie Hallahan. Willie, of course, hosts the website sportingacause.com, where he puts up his comments, but also lists uh, events that are coming up that are all sporting events and somehow connected to fundraisers. Willie, once again, a good morning to you. Good morning, and a chilly morning it is, Marshall. Good to, good to hear you. It's good to hear you, and it's good to be inside. Yeah, exactly, right. Uh, I have some stuff to talk about. Uh, I've, I've touched on this uh, event before, but as I learn more about it, I think this is really just what people need this time of year. It's, uh, it starts tomorrow, and <clears throat> for the next six weeks, the Northwest Connecticut YMCA uh, is holding what they call the Reset Challenge. And uh, it's free. Uh, and uh, it involves uh, a lot of stuff. It, uh, uh, first of all, you get two free weeks uh, uh, at the physical participation at their Y. Um, uh, the part of the program is in person. Some of it's virtual, but it's six weeks long. It's, uh, you're doing 30 minutes a day of activities five days a week. Um, you, you get uh, actual guidance three times a week from coaches, uh, there are chances to win prizes by tracking your progress. There's all kinds of motivational support. and It's not just physical. I guess it um, uh, uh, addresses our emotions and uh, spirituality as well as our, our getting our bodies back in shape. It's, uh, clearly these folks have thought this program out, uh, and they've devised something using little bits of uh, you know, in-person and, and, and distance learning, so to speak, um, and, and for the next, uh, right into the middle of March, uh, this program goes. So uh, I, I would, uh, would certainly ask everybody who uh, who's feeling, uh, you know, that they've missed out uh, because of the pandemic and everything, to uh, check this program out. Um, you can you can uh, just text the word reset at uh, this number eight four four seven nine five zero nine one four, and if you don't get that number. You can either go to sportingacause.com and, and find the link. Or you can go to the Northwest, uh, Northwest uh, Y website, which is nwcty.org. Uh, or, you know what, I, I don't know, Marshall, if, if a lot of your, your listeners know this, but you can, you can go back and find programs uh, on your show. You just go to robinhoodradio.com and you, you click on the on-demand tab, and over on the right, you see a column of all the shows you do. And you do a lot of them. I, I can believe how many shows you do. And you can click on, on any one of them and, and find archived shows. So you can, if you miss something or you want to rehear something, uh, you can always do that. It's a, it's a great resource, and uh, I'm not sure everybody knows about it. It's amazing. We get, uh, for a tiny little radio station, we get between uh, 22 and 26,000 uh, downloads a month at that site. Uh, which we had to go to our own individual server because there were so many. It's wow. People do exactly that. They use it as an archive, and they go back and they recheck things. It really is, and it's easy to find just to robinhoodradio.com. Yeah, easy to do, if, even yeah. for someone like me, who's a, who's a <laughs> technological dinosaur. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would ask, uh, yeah, please, please uh, check that out. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, it's it's up to you to how much, I mean, you said, oh, it's a six-week commission, commitment, but, well, you know, you get out of it what you want to, and uh, I encourage anybody to do that. Um, uh, February 6th through the 14th, the Bob and Peg Andrula Sweetheart Run Walk, it's a 5K race. I talked about that a bit before. They switched uh, from an in-person race to a virtual one a couple of weeks ago, but I, I think they've done a great job of trying to keep it as close to an in-person race as they can without it actually being that way. You know, the, you, can, um, uh, you can actually go to my website again, uh, Sporting Cause, to get the details, but you register online, it's $30 a runner um, or walker, depending on what you want to do. Instead of a one-day race, uh, it's a week long, it's the 6th through the 14th. You, uh, you can uh, run or walk the actual course. It's over in Bantam. I think it goes by Bantam Lake, so it's a beautiful place. Um, and you can, there's a re an app you can uh, get and um, submit your time, and you can win awards. So you can, I think it's for the first 150 registrants, you can get a long sleeve T-shirt, and that's you know the T-shirts are all important to runners. You know they accumulate those, um, and the race benefits the Litchfield Community Center, which is a, a great organization in Litchfield. And again, you can go to Sporting a Cause to get the details for that. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, February 12th through the 14th is <clears throat> Jump Fest. I talked uh, at 
length about that last week, and I'll I'll just touch on a, one aspect of it uh, today because this is the part that scares me the most about uh, the alterations we've had. We're holding it just like we always have. It's a Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. And uh, among the restrictions that we're operating under is the number of people we can let in uh, at a time. It's 400 people, which is 25% of our capacity. Uh, So the first 400 people on Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday get in. And, And no one else can get in unless someone leaves. And my biggest fear is that uh, you know, people just arrive and they, they get turned away. I mean, uh, what makes this even worse, in a way, maybe worse isn't the right word, uh, we're getting an inordinate amount of interest. We're getting emails all the time. And, and the thing that dominates is people are wondering about tickets, going to get tickets in advance and all that. Well, we gave that a lot of thought. Um, there are events, if I compare it to events that I've had on my website, uh, uh, Signing up for a, a virtual event has turned all online. The, the only way you could you could get a uh, uh, register for a race or a golf tournament or whatever was to do it online. So it's all done before the event itself. Uh, we chose to do the opposite. The only way you could get a ticket is to show up and, and buy one physically at the gate. And the reason we did that, I mean, it, it, it could have been easier to do to, to go online ourselves. But the reason we didn't is we've been selling tickets at the gate forever, you know, for the last 50 years, and you just can't counter that overnight. You know, people, no matter how much we publicized online tickets, people would still be showing up like they always have. Uh, and then you would have a combination of, of, of people showing up. They, they might have already been, uh, I'm, I'm sure we could have filled up the, the 400 people per day online, so people would be showing up and every one of them would have to be turned away. Um, uh, it, it seemed like the... the the least evil <laughs> uh, way of, of doing this is to hold it in person. You have to show up. You get there early enough to get your ticket, and you get in. And, and, and so many, so much of our world is done on a first-come, first-served basis anyway. So what we're doing is we're going to uh, sell tickets right there at the gate. Um, we've moved the ticket booth out to the end, to the parking lot, instead of halfway down the road. So if anybody happens, if, if just to keep people from having to walk that distance just to find out that they can't get in. We're, we're, and uh, as we approach the 400-person mark each day or Friday night, uh, as we get close to that, we're going to send someone out to the road uh, and tell them, you know, uh, we've only got 10 more people or we're, or, or we're full, um, you know, um, so um, you can't get in right now. Now, on, on Saturday and Sunday, uh, because it's all day. Friday night's a fairly narrow window. It's basically 7 to 8.30 or 8. So people coming in, or they're staying. You know, nobody's, nobody's really leaving. Saturday and Sunday is a different story. People come in, some, oftentimes you know, many uh, families come in. They might have one, two, or three children. Um, and they, they, they stay a while, an hour, hour, hour and a half, two hours maybe. The kids get cold, they want to go, and so they leave. Uh, you know, we see it at the ticket booth all the time. Uh, there's there's people coming out, people coming in. Uh, on Saturday and Sunday, there's a better chance that even though you've been closed out of the first 400, there may be a chance to get in uh, later when people come out, but that you kind of take your chances. Anyway, my biggest fear, in a nutshell, is disappointing people. We just don't want to do it, but uh, so the, what we've been trying to stress in, uh, in all of our, our marketing messages is uh, if you want to get in for sure, um, uh, just show up. You know, show up early enough to get your ticket, and then you go, and you're good to go. But uh, be prepared for uh, uh, the disappointment of, of being uh, shut out, at least at the beginning. If you want to feel like hanging out, see if somebody comes out, then, then you can do that too. But we'll see. Um, and uh, anyway, I, I think that's probably the only point I really want to make about Jump Fest today. Uh, I talked about it quite a bit. Last Sunday, and I'll probably talk about it again uh, next Sunday. But this seems like a good point uh, with uh, two weeks left to go. Well, uh, people have people have to come with uh, with patience in their mind, and and yeah. you know what? If they can't get in, they can always uh, uh, leave the car parked there, walk into Salisbury, go to one of the restaurants, or go to Le Bon's, or go, and then come back and check after they have. You know, I mean, that's that's a- true. Yeah, we don't we won't really have the capacity to put them on a waiting list yeah. because. You know, it was so. As we discussed, a lot of discussion took place around this whole process among us 
directors. And, and someone brought up, well, people can wait in their cars. Well, if there are 400 people, the first 400 people are already in. The parking lot is starting to fill up, so the cars that they're sitting in are going to be back in there. How do you access those people? It's not like uh, Panera Breads where you can have the little buzzer thing that you carry with you. We can't do that. Uh, so uh, for the people who are waiting for the opportunity to get in, you're right. You're right. Uh, I, I think, I, and I hope, people who, uh, for one reason or another, get uh, shut out of entrance uh, to do take advantage of the town. You can walk into the town, to the White Hart, or, or, or any of the businesses that are open, uh, and it's, and it's great for the town, it's great for everybody. Um, uh, but it, it's going to be difficult. It's not going to be the easiest thing in the world, uh, and uh, we're, we're, we're sorry for that. But anyway, that's that's the way that's going to work. Next week, I'll talk about uh, Jump Fest in general again. And, um, uh, yeah, we'll get through it. I mean, uh, it's not like we're the only ones who are operating under uh, these conditions. Uh, every every event has had to make their choices. Uh, there's another event I um, want to talk about coming up in May, May 2nd. I'm bringing this, even though May seems like a long way away. You know how the time is flying, Marshall. I mean, uh, May 2nd, uh, it'll, be, it'll happen in no time. Yeah. Uh, there's a race I just heard about that came online. It's the Girls Just Want to Run uh, 5K. It's been around for a while. Uh, they they postponed their race from uh, last year. Uh, they're counting on their their interpretation of the law is that um, road races will become legal again, so to speak, in the spring. So they're scheduling their race in person in Litchfield for May 2nd. And uh, the details are on... Uh, my website, but um, I, I mention it because it's just another uh, way that uh, people who are organizing events have, have chosen to address it. You know, some have been canceled, some are altered, uh, postponed, all these, all the different things that people have chosen to do because of this pandemic. Uh, this, th- these people are going to hold it. They're counting on progression of vaccinations and everything to proceed to the point where things are going to get better by spring, and and they're going to go with that. They hold out the possibility that they may turn virtual at the last minute, and uh, I'll certainly keep everybody updated about that. What I'm finding, anecdotally, when I talk to people who run everything, people are so jonesing for events that they can do in person. Uh, There are a lot of runners around. I'm not one, Marshall. You're not one, but there are a lot of runners around, and they and and they'll tell you a virtual event just ain't the same thing. Like a golf tournament, they one of the big things about in-person events is only partially the event itself, whether you're a runner or a golfer. It's the camaraderie uh, of these events that's so important. And when you eliminate that, I've played in a couple of golf tournaments before the season ended uh, that were uh, organized in a, in a safe manner. Uh, but they totally eliminated gathering, even to the point where there was no registration table where people could clump up as they they arrived and signed up. That was all done online. Uh, any meal, uh, there was no gathering for a meal. It was all uh, to go. And uh, even awards, there was no gathering for that. Or raffles, you didn't sit around uh, looking at your raffle ticket numbers. Um, and, uh, and, and, of course, on a golf course, you can space yourselves safely anyway. Running the same way, people typically would go, they'd see their friends that they haven't seen in a while, they register, they get you know, fruit or uh, water or whatever, they start in a mass start, and then they gather for um, um, awards afterwards. None of that happens, even you know, even in the in-person races before the governor uh, banned them. People are really, really, really looking forward to uh, being able to get back to some sense of normalcy in events. And um, just as they were in November before they, they ended the, the running races, um, uh, I'm sure there'll be still be safeguards in the spring. People might have to wear masks. And quite frankly, Marshall, you know, I, I, you know, I, I appreciate the difficulty in our government in, in wrangling uh, all this, trying to keep everybody safe at the same time, trying to not eliminate every experience. I, I'm not quite sure why they banned the road races. Um, you know, there, there are so many things that have been able to be held outside. I mean, Jump Fest, for example, you know, we're, we're, we're able to hold that. Um, golf tournaments were, in the fall, were, were able to be held outdoors. I'm not sure why they decided to ban road races specifically. It, it, you know, I, I watched them be held safely um, back in October. So, But it, that's neither here nor there, really, because uh, 
hopefully in the spring, uh, we can go back to normal at least there. Um, and there are a couple of golf tournaments. I, I mentioned them last week. They're, uh, what's interesting is there are golf tournaments that typically are held in mid or late summer. Uh, this year, they're, they're having them early. The Isaiah Lamb Golf Classic, I think that was in either July or August. They're going to be in June 12th, uh, who's a Tonic Youth Services uh, Bureau Golf Tournament. Uh, that was also late in the summer. They're uh, scheduled now for uh, June 28th. So, um, and these are major fundraisers for these uh, these organizations. So everybody wants to get back to normal. Um, they, they need to raise money for their programs. Uh, the participants need to get out there and, and uh, resume their activities. And uh, I view these these events, upcoming events, as uh, as a kind of a light at the end of the tunnel. So. Let us pray. All right, Willie, even though it's uh, not a busy time, lots to talk about. And, of course, uh, next week uh, we'll talk more about Jump Fest. Yeah, and uh, we can make our predictions about the Super Bowl, too. (laughs) All right, Willie. Have a great week. (laughs) Thank you, Marshall. You, too. Thanks.